Okay, good day. How's everybody doing? Uh, we're going to be doing a tutorial today on the VRF uh, Superbug. And the plane we'll be in today is the world famous Puke and Dogs VFA 143 CAG plane or the Commander Air Group. So uh, that's uh, Flight 100. Uh, we're going to be going through a regular startup tutorial from cold and dark. When you have your settings in realism set to cold and dark, and you have all your realism setting sets, that's what we're going through. Uh, a couple little quick things. The reason I'm doing this is because every video I found was 70 minutes long and somebody rambling along, or five minutes long, incomplete, and got background music in it. So this, I hope to be about 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, it should be nice and even and talk about everything that you really need to know to get this plane up in the air and started. So first thing, wheel chocks and the covers and all that stuff is when the canopy's open, the parking brake's set, and the battery's off. Everything should be off and everything should be set up and that will happen when you turn the battery on the pilot will appear and uh, we'll take it from there so here we are cold and dark cold and dark on the ramp in fort myers florida that's where i live so let's get on with it uh, we're going to go inside the jet so here we are we're inside so we're going to go through a standard startup sequence okay and the very first thing we're going to do is the battery electrical panel. We're gonna turn the battery on. Always use the mouse wheel, it works so good. Um, if you just roll the mouse wheel up, that's perfectly natural and it works wonderfully. Once you get used to all of the switches that way, it's really, really easy. So our battery needs to be between 23 and 24 volts and unless you've got something weird set, it always will be. Okay, so that's great. Uh, we've checked the battery gauge. We're now going to run the fire test. The reason you do these first is because the NATOP says so. And the other reason the NATOP says so is that uh, you're about to start up the APU, which uh, has fuel and fire both. So we don't want to fire. So you run the fire tests, fire. both A and B. And these are kind of annoying. Um, you have to go through the whole thing. And it's basically the Betty reading off all of the tests. It's like a light test, but audible. So... We're going to do that and we're setting that up while that's going on we're going to set our brightness on our panel this panel right here it's only this panel and this is going to be our rpm this is where we're going to see uh as we get ready to start up our rpm so you note that this flipped back to the normal position we're now going to move it down to the b test and while we're waiting for this to complete we're going to turn on our formation lights i turn about halfway up these are the bright green lights at the the points on the plane, the front, the back, and the uh, wing tips uh, for formation flying. We're going to turn on the strobe and the external lights. These are your port and starboard red and green navigational lights. The reason we turn them on is because this is going to be in your way as soon as you move the throttles to idle. Great, we've done our fire tests. We've set up our formation position and strobe lights. We're now going to come down here to our APU, our auxiliary power unit, and we're going to turn it on. So we'll hear the igniter. There's the igniter going off, and we're waiting for that ready green light, okay? While that's waiting, we go ahead and go over here to the right generator, and we turn it on. The reason you turn the right generator on is we're about to come back over here and start the right engine, and that provides overspeed protection for the engine, uh, when we, when we, or for the engine cranking procedure. So here we go, we're gonna kick right engine on, Okay, and we're going to immediately start looking up here at the RPM gauge. What we're looking for is 20% before we move the throttle into idle. You can do it before that, but there's no point. It won't do anything until 20%. At 20%, we right-click the right throttle one time. And you will see that that opens the nozzle and gets everything running and wonderful. First thing we get is some alerts because we only have half a plane running. Flight controls is one of the first ones you'll hear, and you need to turn that off with this reset button right there. Once you turn that off, all you'll have is the beep left, and that's okay. We let the beep go for a little bit while we're doing all this stuff. So the next thing that we do, uh, once we've reset that, is we're gonna adjust our panel lights. Those are right here. Console and instrument panels. About halfway up's good for me. Whatever you like, doesn't really matter. So we're now gonna turn on the generator for the left the left generator because we want to, we're about ready to crank the left engine. So here we go. Left engine crank. And we're gonna go and watch this again right here. We're wa waiting for 20% again. While that's coming up, we can turn our anti-skid and our landing lights on, okay? And we're just waiting, waiting, crank, 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 and we're at 20%. Turn it on. So now we have both of our engines running. So the next thing we need to do is set our bleed air. 
This is the bleed air right here, and this has off, right, left, off, and normal. That's what we're heading for. Normal allows air, the bleed air, to provide the electronic, uh, the uh, environmental control system, your air conditioning, and also provides uh, air to cool off the instrument. So if you're sitting on the ground without your engines running and you're running only the APU, you have to hit this right here, AUG pole. That basically allows uh, cool air from the APU to cool the instruments. But since we're not doing that, we don't worry about it. We set this to norm and we let her rip. Okay, both engines are up and running. We can turn off our APU right here, and off it goes, and you'll hear it spool down. Okay, so that's great. We're going to now cycle our flight controls. You see the rudder pedals and our flight controls moving. We're looking good. We're going to move our flaps into the up position for now just to set everything up neutral because they're always hanging out when the plane starts. Okay, last thing uh, before we move to radios is a light test. This basically just lights up all of your indicators and you make sure those are all right and once they are, turn them off. Bleed air knob is still at normal, so we're good to go. It's now time to move to the, um, the navigation, radar, and all that kind of stuff. You've now got the plane running, now it's time to make it functional. Down here, uh, in your radar panel, uh, standby and radar operational. And you switch this to nav. And I have a FLIR installed, and I put it once for standby, twice for on, uh, because I use it to look out the front of the plane, especially if the weather's bad. So I leave the FLIR pod on, and I keep it on. You don't have to have it. You don't need it. Whatever. Doesn't really matter. Okay, we're about to turn on the DDIs. Okay, right DDI, two clicks to auto. Left DDI, two clicks to auto. And this, uh, the uh, MPCD, we're going to turn on by just moving the brightness again about halfway up. On any of these things, if you're not sure, just throw it about halfway up and it's usually pretty good. So while these are coming up, we're now gonna adjust the HUD brightness that's right here. This button right here does HUD brightness and you'll see it coming up there, however you like it. The hue button right here just changes the hue of it. I like it a bit orangish, so that's how we set that. The other thing you need to set is this. This is the AOA brightness, that's this gauge right here and we turn it up. Uh, you won't see anything happen right now, but if you don't, if you forget that, you won't have AOA indication right here as you're coming into land. So next thing up is a bit test. And if you'll see it right here on the left DDI, it says bit. So we click it once, and then you'll see over here an auto. So we press auto, and what this is doing is running through all of these things, all of these checks, and they'll say go when it's ready. See, go, go, just like NASA. Uh, okay, after that, uh, we're going to turn our master caution off because it was set when we first started the plane. We're going to turn on the COM1 radio right here. Okay, Turn it on so we can tune. Now, I've set up my channels. You see it's channel 3, and I've got, I've got ATIS on one, which I'm going to tune right now. So uh, that's air traffic information system. And there it comes. I'm moving it to ground frequency so you don't have to listen to it. But there it is, scrolling up here. This is our ATIS information. You should read this separately. This is a separate tutorial on how to set these radios up, but it's really cool. It's done within the uh, Aircraft Configuration Manager, and it's really easy. Um, and then you just click, 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 click through the channels instead of sitting there punching all the buttons out. It's way worth your time to figure that out. So once you have set that up, I go over to my right DDI, and I select FLIR. That gives me a nice view at the front of the plane uh, in case they go through clouds or whatever. It's uh, FLIR, so it's better vision. So we've done that on the left side. Now that all these say go, I'm going to show you how the menu system works on these DDIs. The DDIs, this is the most important button on any of them. Okay, This right here is a clock. That's what you see moving. It might as well say menu, and you can set it that way if you want to, but that's also outside the scope of this. Just pretend like that's menu. You click it once, you get tactical. You click it twice, you get supplemental. Again, tactical, supplemental. Right now, I'm going to supplemental, checklist. I can see my takeoff, right? Here's my takeoff uh, checklist. So that's great. I check down here, uh, the map view, my scale is set to 40 right now. I'm gonna set it to 20, see the 20 change. So there we go, scale 20. Uh, I'm kind of set to go as far as that goes. I double check tack in volume, which is way back here, tack in. Um, make sure it's on, it's your outer marker indicators and any, any navigational information audible, uh, if that isn't on, you won't hear it. And now we're ready to move outside the plane and uh, kind of check everything from the outside. So real quick, you'll see that uh, we're sitting in the plane, everything's ready. So what we're gonna do is cycle the canopy. 
And I, here's a neat thing that you won't know. You have to read this. So you have a canopy button, and I'm not sure what it is on yours. I've set mine to control C. It doesn't matter what you set it to, but whatever you set it to, pressing it once closes the canopy or opens it, toggles it, right? If you do that same button, whatever it is on your machine, um, and then hit two, so you hit, con in my case, control C, then two, with a pause in between, you'll pull up the ladder. If you hit, if you hit your canopy and then three, you'll open up the nose cone where the radar dome is. Okay, so that's again, your whatever your canopy button is and three does that. And there it goes and that folds it up. Uh, your canopy button and four with a pause in between opens up all of your electronic space. And I accidentally opened up my canopy too, but that's fine. So there's the base and then canopy. So that's one way. That's a little tricky. That's a timing thing. You'll have to play with it to get it right, but it's basically two is ladder, three is uh, radome, and four is electronics bays. So we're also going to cycle. Uh, we pulled the ladder up. We're going to cycle our, our probe, uh, which is usually the command I, and you can see it coming up right here. There's our probe. Probe has been cycled. We're now going to check our launch bar. There goes the launch bar down. No problem with the launch bar. We're also going to come around and check our hook. Hook's looking good. Hook is out. Hook is up. Other thing that we're going to do now, the last thing, last piece before we start the taxi, is we salute the ground crew. I believe it's Control G. Uh, so we're good to go. Everything's kind of looking good. I want to show you a couple other quick little things out here. First, checking controls. All looks good. You'll note the rudders aren't moving, even though I'm clicking the rudders. No rudder movement. That's because we're what they call wow or wait on wheels. And the rudder tail, the elevator, or I'm sorry, the vertical stabilizer uh, pieces do not move. The rudder panels do not move when you're in weight on wheels unless you have nose wheel steering on. So we're about to go in and turn on nose wheel steering because we need to taxi. So here we go, back into the plane. And we click uh, nose wheel steering, NWS. And uh, I forget what the hotkey is. I believe it's shift in, but it could be control in. And you'll see this come up right here, nose wheel steering. Now there's another step called nose wheel steering high gain mode. And that's a slightly different button. I believe it's shift in or control shift in. Uh, just look it up, it's real quick. It's nose wheel steering, nose wheel steering high gain. This allows you to make rapid turns. But be warned, if you're in nose wheel steering high, the only reason you, only way you'll get that to light up is if your wings are folded like this. It's for carrier deck movement. And if your realism settings are set that way, which mine are. So uh, we're all set to go. We have that set up. Master caution off. And at this point, uh, at this point, we're ready to call air traffic control and request taxi. So here we go. Uh, well, actually, before I even do that, I'm going to make sure that I'm tuned. I am. I'm tuned to ground frequency. So we're going to request taxi, depart straight out. Then we're going to acknowledge the taxi instructions. Acknowledge. Okay, so it's now time to roll. So we turn off the brakes and we throttle it up a little. And you'll note that again, I'm still on nose wheel steering high. It's a very short taxi to my active runway of 31, but uh, you're welcome to tune out at this point. You've got the plane running and pretty much everything's in place. There's a couple of little things I want to show you here at the threshold of the runway. Um, so if you'll hang on just a second, that's fine. If not, uh, you probably got what you need already. Uh, we are taxiing at a super run. Uh, all flight instructors tell you to taxi at a brisk walk. Nobody does that. Uh, most people do it at a gallop. So I'm doing it at a brisk run and uh, we're heading over to the active runway of 31 via the taxi we have been designated. So as we roll up on it, throttle it out, throttle to zero, and use a little differential braking to get around the turn. And there we go. And now we're set, and also put your parking brake out while you're doing this. Parking brake's out. So we're set, we're right here. So now we're gonna do some things. We're gonna fold our wings out and I want you to watch the nose wheel steering. Here we go, out. This nose wheel steering high will disappear. It'll become regular nose wheel steering when those wings lock down. And there it goes. Okay, so our wings are down. We now need to add flaps. So um, now that, oh, 
I'm going to show you this from the outside. So if we add flaps, I also want to show you that the the rudder rudders are now working because we've got nose wheel steering on. So you see them actually move on the ground. Otherwise, you wouldn't know they were working. So all our flight controls look good. Okay, the last couple of things are uh, the arm the ejection seat. So we're looking good. I have no warnings, no advices, although we're about to get one because I'm going to show you something else. This is the last thing you need to do. This is the rudder trim right here. If you roll the wheel on the base, you get rudder trim. This button right here, though, is takeoff trim. Okay, if you push it once, it resets everything to center. And I don't have an indicator here, so I'm not in takeoff trim mode. It's really important. If you click it again, okay, oops, sorry. If you click it again, what you should see is it advice, trim. It says warning, hey, trim. Uh, I'm now in takeoff trim mode. I'll show you what that looks like on the outside real quick. It looks like this with the elevator planes up 15 degrees or you know, sort of pointed down, but up is where they're really pointed. So if, again, if you click that button once, you end up with flat. Takeoff trim is like that with 15 degrees up. So again, one more time, that's that button right there. That's what it does. Clicking that center alternates between the two. You will always have this advice. Normally this is where warnings are, but this is just telling you you're trimmed up, ready to go. In that case, that's a warning we want. Okay, I think we're ready. Ejection seat, we've done controls, we've done wings. Uh, trim, flaps, hook, harness, warning lights, nose wheel steering back to low, and the seat is armed. So we are now ready to request our takeoff. So that's what we will do. Uh, and, oops. And as always, I've forgotten to tune it. So there's the tower frequency. Here we go again. Request takeoff clearance. And there's one last thing to show you before we leave. So we acknowledge our takeoff clearance and we close that up. Last thing I like to do is set up this for now that I've gone through the checklist. So you click it once for tactical, twice for supplemental. Horizontal situation indicator, HSI. This brings you your standard setup. Turn on TACAN and ILS, okay? And then the other thing is I like to add the map mode to it. And I like to click this to get the overlay set the scale to sort of 20 a little closer in and then click HSI one more time now I've got everything I need everything's lit up and you'll note I've got a heading bug that's not pointed anywhere that I need my runway is 3-1 right here so I like to point this pointer right here to 45 or 90 degrees and that sets me up good for crosswind and base legs so right here is where you set that and you just roll the mouse wheel and you'll see it moving and now I'm set up for my base and crosswind legs so that's the last thing I like to do before I take off. We've been cleared, we're set, we can release our parking brake, and we can get out of here. So we'll throttle it up, and we'll go ahead and uh, do a little differential braking to get us onto the runway properly. And we're just gonna throttle this bad boy right on up. Rotate it, oh, somewhere around 150. Let's see how that goes. Let's see what it looks like. Rotate, wheels up, flaps in. And uh, I usually take it out of burner after that. So we're kind of good to go. And that is getting off the ground in the BRS Superbug. And I hope you've enjoyed it. Happy flying.